Do you want to change your life? Change your thinking. Change your life. Do you want better relationships? Change your thinking. Change your life. Do you know the potential of who you are today? Who you can become? Change your thinking. Change your life. Join Dr. Preston Rich as he helps you to change, change your thinking, thinking to change, change your life. From the military to corporate to the classroom, Dr. Rich shares his experience and knowledge to help others be their best selves. In this fast-paced world that we live in, we tend to forget how special we are. Doc Rich says you are perfectly imperfect and uniquely amazing. And we're going to act like it. Call in or listen in as Doc Rich speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Dr. Preston Rich. Hey, 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 everybody. This is Dr. Preston Rich. Uh, Like she said, I'm out here trying to give you a little bit of knowledge, uh, impart a little bit of knowledge on what's going on in the world today. Uh, Today, I want to talk to you guys about uh, some pretty serious items. Uh, as you know, well, if you don't know, you've been under a rock. The coronavirus has hit the United States and has pretty much shut us down. Uh, industry has taken appropriate measures to uh, lay off or furlough their people. Uh, the hotel and travel industry is particularly it hit particularly hard. I uh, just saw on the news today that the hotel industry and the airline industries are going to go to the United States federal government to get a form of bailout because of the fact that they had to lay off, some companies had to lay off at least 90% of their workforce to ensure that they stayed afloat as a company. Um, I have some experience with a couple of companies. I used to work for a hotel management company here in Dallas, and approximately two weeks ago, I decided to pack my things and get out of the corporate world. Uh, The company uh, was doing fine. the coronavirus was about a week into the United States. Um, I left on March the 2nd. But I saw some things particular that were particularly troubling uh, for the industry, not for so much for the actual company that I work for, but more so for the industry, the hotel industry. And I thought about it as far as travel and transportation and hotels and thought to myself, self, huh, what would I do uh, if I was the CEO of a company? I would probably do... Uh, some of the same things, I lay folks off or what have you, or try to cut uh, where I could to ensure that um, uh, our company stayed afloat. Now, here, here's the, the issue I have with that. Um, first of all, ah, I, I wanted to tell you folks, I am in Frisco, Texas. Uh, my name is Dr. Preston Rich. I'm reading the bio. Uh, you can also hit me on social media at Doc Rich Speaks. That's D O C. S P E A K S Doc Rich Speaks. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube under the same moniker. Uh, if you ever want to reach out to me or give me some information, uh, you can either email me at doc at prestonrich.com or you can get me on my social media platforms. Uh, you should hear me wherever you're listening on, uh, where you get your podcast from, is it, if it's either Apple uh, or Google or Deezer, or Podcast Addict, or wherever you are. I appreciate the fact that you're listening to me, and hopefully I'll be able to impart some knowledge to you. So let's get back to what I was talking about. I see a lot of companies laying people off, and it's very disheartening, and I try to understand during layoffs. I've been through several cycles of layoffs. I've been in leadership since, you know, for 30 years, and I've been in corporate in five different industries, um, the consumer goods industry, uh, which is probably doing pretty well right now, right about now, because when people are quarantined in their homes, they're probably getting a lot of snacks and cookies and cakes and sodas and everything. And oddly enough, when the uh, coronavirus hit hard, especially in North Texas here, uh, schools have closed. Uh, in some states, schools have closed for the remainder of the year. Uh, some schools have extended the spring break for one for one week. I know in Frisco, in the Frisco ISD. Uh, they have extended the spring break. Uh, Frisco Montessori, where my son attends, has uh, has also done the same. Um, and it's more of a thing where 
parents were all of a sudden faced with number one, their home, their homeschooling their children, or number two, they have to find alternate means of care. But how do you go and give some and ask someone to take care of your children if they are quarantining themselves, especially at daycares or whatnot? People are not trying to have children around. They're not trying to have a lot of gatherings. So what do you do uh, when you're sitting at home trying to figure out, hey, how am I going to do this for my children? Do I have to worry about my job? Uh, do I have to worry? You can't go to places of worship. You can't get in any gatherings at a bar. All the sports are down. Um, no sports, are, no, no sports teams are playing. Uh, sports radio shows are just talking about the coronavirus, which to me is crazy because I listen to sports channels, so I don't have to listen to the news, but I do listen to news, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. Everyone's talking about the coronavirus. They're talking about the devastation that it is that is that is taking place in the world. What I'd like to talk about is what happens to the people. What happens to the people who are actually scared, uh, panicked, uh, uh, angry, uh, sitting at home with their children? They can't go places. The cities are shut down. The city of San Francisco has a shelter in place for, I guess, 30 days, saying that you have to pretty much stay in your home. Uh, you go to the stores, you can't find toilet paper or water or what have you. Uh, the essentials. I don't know why people, I don't know whether they're eating toilet paper or what have you, but the coronavirus has not seemed to be a gastrointestinal issue. Uh, maybe it's because people are just blowing their nose or I, I don't know whether I, I have no idea. Uh, maybe because of the people, maybe because the, the, the parents are out at their jobs all day. They don't use as much toilet paper at home. I don't know. But what I do know is, we need to worry about the deterioration of spirit and the deterioration of mind as people are sitting at home. You know, people, we're social beings. We have to be socially connected. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, not to bore you with a bunch of science, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs say that people have a need for several things uh, on, in the, on a hierarchy. They need to have uh, physiological needs met. They need to have their safety needs met and they need to have their uh, belonging needs met. Uh, after that comes uh, your esteem needs and then your needs for self-actualization. The one I want to talk about is the need for belonging. People have to be able to belong to something. And now you're taking away the thing that they belong to. And uh, sadly, so most people uh, relate their belonging or their need to be needed to their jobs. This is troubling because when they don't have that, when you're not the boss at the job to actually tell someone what to do, or you're not being told what to do, or not being led somewhere, or not having a task to work on, you're all of a sudden finding yourself in a situation where you get into a, a some people may slip into depression. Some people may slip into a state of anger. Some people may go straight to Dada, you know, um, 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 denial anger, depression, and then acceptance, especially in the case that they get laid off. Now you're sitting at home, you're supposed to be working from home, but this coronavirus thing takes a turn and now you have to be laid off. And now you have to go through the trouble of applying for unemployment benefits. And now you have to figure out where to put your kids and for daycare. And then you have to figure out how to educate your children. And then if you're sending your children to a private, private school, how am I going to get money to actually pay for that? Then you have to search for a job while you're now, nobody's while, while no one is actually hiring because nobody's at work. And if they are at work, they're online and you're not doing you're not doing uh, interviews, face to face interviews. But what opportunity do we have to take advantage of our technology and take advantage of the human spirit? If you look at this and you look around and you see a lot of times I, I, I coach people and I hear a lot of people come to me and say, Dr. Rich. I don't understand why my husband, he travels all the time. When he does come home, he's watching TV and sports or he's going out with the boys or he's sitting at the bar. And what am I to do? Because I'm here with the kids. Same thing for, for husbands. They say, hey, my wife is a corporate executive or not, or, or she is uh, traveling all the time with her job and I need her here with the kids. I need to do something. And then when she gets there with the kids, she's tired. Uh, you guys haven't worked out how to actually manage your house. Now, it's kind of funny that people can be managers or executives at their jobs, but they have no clue on how to manage their household, especially with all of the people at the house at the same time. How do you manage that? Men, 
you should have a plan. Ladies, single parents, you should have a plan. Now, I'm not telling you to go and sit down and say, okay, I plan to do this or I plan to do that. But if you look at your routine day to day, you get up, you go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, you take a shower, hopefully. Uh, you put some water, soap and water on yourself. I don't know, however you want to do it, it doesn't matter to me. But um, that's your personal business. If you don't, keep that to yourself. I, I don't want to know. Write me later. Write me later. I don't want to know about that. But the thing about it is you have this whole routine that you do when you go to work and now you don't have that routine anymore. And even if you're required to actually log online, log on and, and do your work, are you really going to do be dedicated to doing all of your work? Yeah, I mean, so most of you probably will. But the but the managers at these organizations have no clue how to manage an all remote workforce unless they're an all remote workforce from the beginning. How do you as an individual manage that? I can tell you, I can give you some tips because I am a single dad. I'm a single father. I've been a single father since my son was four months old and we work it out. But what were you, what are you going to do to make sure that you as a person is not getting, are not getting depressed as, as an adult, not getting depressed because children pick up on these things. Now, children, my son actually was very happy because dad is home and he's able to, you know, stay, watch movies all day with dad. And we did that for about three days until I had to say, you know what, dude, daddy has to go back to work because daddy has to make some money. And since I'm an entrepreneur, this is the way I make money. I have to do my podcast. I have to do my articles. And now since no one is asking for motivational speakers or speakers anywhere, you know, I have to resort to doing it this way. This is the plan. When you look at the situation that you're in, you have to understand that you are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. You are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Let me say it one more time. You are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Look around. Look around your house right now. Is there something you should do? Is that there's a pile of clothes over there that needs to be folded? There's some things out in the garage that you probably need to be able to clean out. There's some things that you have to do that you put on your to-do list to say, damn, I got to get that done. Go ahead and get that done. You got all your kids there to help you with it. And children should have the routine too. Look at what they do in their schools. If they're under five years old, they probably take a nap every day. They have a little cubby. Now they get to take a nap in their bed. Um, do they have their lunches? Yep. You now you can't go to Chick-fil-A. You can't, you can't do Uber Eats. I wouldn't do the Uber Eats. I don't know. I mean, wait, 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 let me disclaimer. I have used Uber Eats and I have nothing wrong with Uber Eats. Okay. Uber Eats is great. DoorDash, great. Favor, great. All of these places are great because you have these runners out there. Me, on the other hand, I have used them before to feed myself, to feed my teammates, and to feed my child. Uh, at this time right now, how how safe is that? I don't want to take any money out of anybody's pocket. But if you feel as though it's safe and you feel as though it's something to do, hey, man, those people are out there making that money. And I think that if you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and do that. Uh, but the bottom line is you're still responsible to feed your children. And what you have to do is probably, I don't know, I, I hate to tell you this, but you might have to cook something, make some sandwiches, do something. The together time, the time that you have with your people right now, your children, your spouse, your significant other, that's the time right now that you need to rediscover who they are. Now, all these times around when we're looking at all of these things that we did, two weeks ago, you were probably complaining that you don't have more time. When these people die, you're going to stand up there on this, you're going to stand up there on this podium and you're going to tell everybody about how this person was and blah, 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 slow singing, snot slinging and flower bringing when they die. Well, you have an opportunity to deal with them right now. So why don't you do that? Grab your kids and give them a hug and kiss. Grab your spouse and give them a hug and kiss and say, hey, I love you. If you have an elephant in the room, talk about it, fix it, work it out. These people, look, let me tell you something. You have been given a unique opportunity to spend more time with your loved ones and you're getting paid for it. Now, some of you might say, damn, I'm with my kids. It's, I don't, oh my God, they're driving me nuts. Yeah, they are driving you nuts, but you remember you made them when you were ooh baby, ooh baby, and back in the day, and you did that, and nine months later, you came out with the kid. Well, you should have thought about that then. Now you have these kids. You have the unique opportunity to take them outside and teach them some things or, or go walk around or rediscover who they are, help them to understand who you are. You're there, present in their face. Now the job, managers. And I say managers, not leaders, because leaders should already know this. 
managers, here's what you don't want to do. What you don't want to do is to lose the person to either something else or another company. Good leaders are actually on the phone with their workers every week. Just like you have one-on-ones in the office, which you should have one-on-ones. If you don't know about one-on-ones, DM me and I'll tell you about it. Hell, I might do a podcast about it. I have about six different things that people want me to podcast about. And uh, I'm getting to it. I'm getting them out as quickly as I can, people. Um, um, here I go with the um again. Sorry. The, the, the issue that I want to, to get across to leaders is because people are working from home, you have to instill a bit of trust and you have to instill a bit of, a bit of give a damn. You have to actually pick up the telephone and call your people and say, Hey, how you doing? How's everything going? Do you need anything from me? What can I do for you? Not Hey, did you get that work done? Hey, did you get those transactions finished? Hey, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do the other? No, you can't do that. That is not something that you can do. What you need to do now is to lead these people and give them an alternative and give them hope and give them a sense of belonging. This is what I was telling you about with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You have to give people and fulfill their need to belong. Three of the content theories of three of the top three contents theories of motivation are based on needs, okay? Needs, whether you're talking about Maslow, whether you're talking about Aldifer, whether you're talking about um, uh, McClellan, you still have to understand that needs of relatedness, needs of affiliation, the needs of belonging are the things that motivate people to get things done. So what do you do as a leader? Fulfill their needs. They have a need, but these people are scared. I don't care what you say. They're scared. They're sitting at home with their kids worrying about you and your, you and the job. And if you're going to call them and say, Hey, don't come to work. I'll send you your things. If you've never gotten that phone call, just just think about this. Just think about this. You're sitting at home, fat, dumb, and happy doing your work or what you thought was your work. And you get a phone call from the HR people or your manager, your lead, your manager and says, Hey, we're doing some more layoffs and you're cutting and I'm sorry. Here's your severance. Bye. That hurts. That hurts. Take it from somebody who's been laid off before as a contractor and as an employee. I remember one time I was with a company and uh, uh, an investment firm came in and purchased us and laid off all the managers, brought their managers in and said, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Put by. I was at another company, a beverage organization, uh, who actually had people working for them for years A contracting company came in where they were outsourcing their IT services. And then you go from 15 years of an employee to to the next day being a contractor. All of those things happen. What's going to happen with your job? And what's going to happen when you don't have that company to go to? Well, this is a time for you to actually look at the things that you love and start doing those. What is that project that you have? What is that thing that, is, that makes you you? What is the thing that helps you to be the best you you can be? Do you like to do painting? Do you like to do what is it that you do that you can put together that you can sell to other people? What is it? What is the thing that you do that you love to do that you never had time to do? Go do that. I challenge you today to try to figure out one thing, one thing that you can do that you can focus on to say, hey, uh, this is my worth. This is what I'm doing. And guess what? In case this company says that they don't need me anymore, this is how I'm going to generate revenue. There is something that each and every one of us has inherently in us that is instilled in us that is meant for everybody else. You are a social human being. Take advantage of the social that you have. Take advantage of the talents that you have. Right now in this situation, use this time to get into yourself and understand who you are. By understanding who you are, you help all those other people around you. There's nothing worse than being involved or trying to get someone to understand you and you can't understand yourself. How much sense does that make? You want other people to understand you and you can't figure out who you are. You can't figure out how you think, you can't figure out how you communicate, and you can't figure out if your communication is effective. If you did, you would have a way to measure that. People, in these trying times, we are Americans, so we understand that being an American means that we have to be resilient. We've been through this stuff before. Every hundred years, go look at the history books. Every hundred years, we have a quote-unquote plague, and America, America is still here for us to talk about it. 
We're Americans, people. We've been through, been there, done that. We're a whole collection of immigrants, and I'm sure that some of the companies that some some of the countries that Americans have come from are doing way worse off than we are right now. People, this is a time when you are to have, take advantage of the opportunities that you've been given to relate to one another. These are the things that are helping you. This is the wake up call for you to say, hey, I probably need to invest a little more in myself and in my children and in those who love me. That company that doesn't if that company does not have your name on the marquee, you're a resource to help them get more money. And that's hey, you know what? And if that's what you can do, if that's all you can do right now to put food on the table, I'm not knocking that. But if you're in a situation right now where you're on your job. And you're un- trying to understand your job and you're away from your job and you have less headaches. You can sleep at night. You can, you have greater interaction with your loved ones. You're liking yourself more. You're spending more time with yourself and you're invested in you. You probably need to think about that company that you're working for. That company that's working you to death because as soon as things got hard, they laid you off. As soon as things got hard, they decided they're going to go another direction. As soon as things got rough, they don't care how much money you made for them because, hey, they're paying you. That's the social contract. You give us stuff, we'll give you stuff. They give you benefits. They give you this. They give you that. But what is it that you can do for yourself? Now you're starting to understand how important that you are not to your organization. You're not that important to your organization. This is what you probably need to figure out. This is a wake up call for you. And I'm not telling you to go and go quit your job or what have you. What I am telling you is if you're in a situation that you're at your job and you're not being treated the way that you want to be treated, get a box, put your stuff in it and leave. You don't need to be there because here's the problem. These companies had no problem. With you coming to work and doing whatever you had to do for them, they didn't want hell. Some of some of the people that you, some of the people that are working from home have never worked from home in their life because their managers, and I will say managers, not leaders, their managers decided that that wasn't good enough for them. They wouldn't trust you enough to actually go home and do the work you needed to do. Now that everybody's out here sick or potentially can can, can potentially get sick. Now they're begging you to go home and saying, please go and do some work for me at your place of residence because, you know, now we trust you to go ahead and work from home. That's a bunch of BS and crackers. It doesn't make make sense to me. I don't understand how companies who never allow their workers to work from home now, and now that they're forced to make you work, now you're forced to work from home. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now things are different. No. What that tells me is when times get rough enough, when times get rough enough, you make certain provisions and you do certain things that are different. Now you look at it and guess what? You probably could have been working from home three, four months ago. Companies bend and shift based on what's going on with them, not you. You need to understand that. Find out what it is that you like to do and go do that. I'm not telling you to leave your job, but I am telling you to reevaluate where you are. Because in the grand scheme of things, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about who matters, what matters to who matters, and how do you facilitate getting what matters to who matters. And that's the whole deal. All right? Hey, this concludes my podcast. I said a lot today. Um, I'm probably going to come back and say more. Uh... But what I do want you to do is to understand that if you ever need anybody to talk to, you want some advice or anything like that, come out and come talk to me. Reach me on Instagram or on on Facebook or on um, Twitter. And, you know, I don't know if you can hear this in the background, but I'm in my office with my door closed and my nine year old son has forgotten that daddy is on a podcast. So my nine-year-old son is out there in the living room, living his best life, hollering at the TV, running around, jumping, running into stuff. He forgot. Hey, well, you know, dad is in the back room. But you know what? I embrace that. You know why? That's my kid. That's my son. That's my boy. And if you're listening to this podcast, you have a problem with my son in the background, you probably need to reevaluate where you are. Go get your son and try to figure out how to spend time with him. But I I enjoy that. I I embrace it. And hey, this is just part of the transparency to say that Dr. Rich is the same as you. I just went to school longer. Hey, people, if you ever get a chance, check out my YouTube channel. 
Check out my, my Instagram page. Check out my Twitter page. Um, I'm trying to get my website back up so I can actually put my videos out there. But I want you guys to relate with me. Relate with me and talk to me and try to, and, and, and let, let me help you. Let me help, help me to help you. If you like what I'm talking about, tell somebody to listen to my podcast. That's not, I don't want you to buy anything. I want you to listen to my podcast. I want you to tell other people to listen to my podcast because you never know what I'm going to talk about. Half the time I have a script. And when I, when I start this, I have a script and then I go pew, straight off script. Any of my students that have never ever had classes with me, they already know this. Yep. Dr. Rich has gone on a rant again, but I hope that the rants help you. I hope that these things that I talk to you about help you get through your day. I'm not going to reach everybody all the time because Dr. Rich is not for everybody all the time. But I do hope that I said something today that can help you change your thinking to change your life. I want to shout out to all my friends, uh, Kenny, Kenny Walker in, in, in Alaska, uh, Greg Lloyd here in Dallas, John Johnson, uh, my special special. She knows who she is in Dallas. And uh, my longtime friend, advisor, buddy, uh, Dr. Jennifer Tebow, who gives me so much advice and so much love uh, and so much guidance that um, I have to go on her co- her podcast, too, because the both of us together just have too much damn sense. Hey, folks, I appreciate everything you've done for me. If I can ever do anything for you, let me know. I'm grateful that you gave me your time. And with that. I love you. You've been listening to the Doc Rich Speaks show. We hope we've stimulated your mind and inspired you to be your best self today. If you've enjoyed the show, tell some friends and join us next time on this same station. Follow Dr. Rich on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Doc Rich Speaks. You can download this podcast on Apple, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Spreaker as well. In the meantime and in between time, remember you are perfectly imperfect and uniquely amazing. So just be great every single day.